Hello, young adults, what's up? I want to say hello and good evening to everyone that's watching, um, especially on YouTube, which will upload a little later after the service. But it's amazing how in the last several weeks, the, the, the subscribers have been growing. The subscriber base has been expanding like crazy. We are excited at what God is doing here. I just want to say hello to some people. I, I have it on live right here. I want to say hello to Ato, Romeo. Uh, I want to say hi to Joans, Keith. Um, let me just scroll up. Sir Patrick, hello to you. Um, Park May Ann, God bless you. Thank you for being a part of this. Um, Sir JS, Hannah, wow. Um, Johanna Go, Jades, Lars, all the way from Norway, Joshua, Didi, hello to you all. Now, before I bore anyone, oh, of course, I have to say hi to this lady, Primrose, okay? God bless you, Primrose. Thank you for being a part of this. Lawrence is in the house. Amazing. For Wina, who's ever present. Of course, the entire staff, Pastor Grace, um, the team here at City Church. God bless you. Thank you for being a part of this. Now, if it's your first time, for those of you that don't know me, me, my name is Brian, and I'm one of the pastors here in City Church, and I lead this ministry alongside Pastor JP. All of you guys know Pastor JP, one of the most amazing people here in Cebu City. Can you appreciate Pastor JP? We had an amazing Zoom service last week with the young adults, and the message was amazing. We heard so many good stories. God is good. Now, let me just kick off this entire service with a prayer. Hang in there. We're going on a journey tonight, and it's going to be good. Prepare for God to speak to you. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for your truth. Lord, we ask, Holy Spirit, that you come visit us and open our eyes and hearts to see what you want us to see. Lord, it's not about us. It's not about City Church. It's not about the people of City Church. It's about you, your heart, your purpose, your plans, your agenda. Lord, so today we yield to you and we say yes to you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Before I begin, let me recognize the volunteers that are right here with me that are helping out. We've got Willie on audio tech. We've got Sir Mark that's on strings. Yes, sir, you're so anointed. Of course, um, hello. Wow. <laughs> Hannah's here, Ato, and of course, we have JB in the house. And what's, what's the name of Hannah's brother again? Abiel, okay? Abiel, uh, special mention ka, huh? okay? So that means you can never be absent, okay? Um, I have a question for you that are watching today. Have you been waiting too long? I want to talk about that today. Have you been waiting long? And I think every single one of us are in the middle of a wait, whatever it is. You're waiting to go abroad, Okay? Maybe you're, you're waiting for that special somebody. Maybe you're just waiting for your breakthrough. You're waiting for the business deal that will work for you. You're waiting for things in your life to happen. Are you in the waiting? Maybe you're going through something now because the waiting's been too long. Now hang in there. I'm going to take us on a journey tonight and I pray that as we go through some of these verses, the Lord's going to speak to you loud and clear. Amen. Now, I want you to turn your Bibles to 1 Samuel chapter 3. This will be the primer, the jumping pad at which we're going to start from. But hang in there with me. This is a short story. I'm going to draw a few things and you'll see it's going to be worth it. 1 Samuel 3, let's read starting in verse 1. It says, Meanwhile, the boy Samuel served the Lord by assisting Eli. Eli was the prophet. Now in those days, messages from the Lord were very rare and visions quite uncommon. One night, Eli, who was almost blind by now, had gone to bed. Verse 3, the lamp of God had not yet gone out and Samuel was sleeping in the tabernacle near the ark of God. Suddenly, the Lord called out, Samuel. Yes, Samuel replied, what is it? 
And in verse 5, he got up and ran to Eli. Here I am. Did you call me? I didn't call you, Eli replied. Go back to your bed. So he did. Then the Lord called out again, Samuel. Again, Samuel got up, went to Eli. Here I am. Did you call me? I didn't call you, my son, Eli said. Go back to bed. And in verse, seven, uh, in verse 7, Samuel did not yet know the Lord because he had never had a message from the Lord before. And in verse 8, this is what happens. So the Lord called a third time. And once more, Samuel got up and went to Eli. Here I am. Did you call me? And then Eli realized it was the Lord who was calling the boy. And he said to Samuel, this is in verse 9, follow with me. Go and lie down again. And if someone calls again, say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel went back to bed. And in verse 10, and the Lord came and called as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel replied, speak, your servant is listening. Amazing story. This boy would hear the audible voice of God. God didn't just speak. In verse 10, it says he came. Amazing. Some of us miss that part. Let me give you three things about this tiny portion of the story that I want you to see before we jump in the topic of waiting. Are you with me? Here's number one, and you got to catch this. The Bible says that Samuel did not know the Lord. And I think the first lesson we can learn from this is this. God is unrelenting in speaking to His children. You may not know Him. He did not just call Samuel once. He called him twice. He called him a third time. And yet, He spoke to him a fourth time. He did not only speak, He visited Samuel. I mean, think about that. I think what we're going through now is when God is silent, I think it's because we moved. He didn't. God is always ready to speak. He's always ready to give you something. And our rule, okay, we always say this. If you're not hearing from God right now, go back to the last thing that He told you and do that. Maybe you haven't been obeying the very last thing He told you a year ago, two years ago. Go back to that and start to hear His voice again. But in this story, you can see God is going to keep speaking. And a lot of us, including myself, how many times has God used our circumstances to speak to us? How many times has He used people to speak to us in different seasons of our lives, even in the times that we were hard-headed? Oh, I can tell you countless stories of the time in Tagalog na binatukan ako ni Lord. Na, hey, wake up. It's a wake-up call, Brian. Come on, get back up on your feet. Come to me. Hear my voice. And God is going to use circumstances in your family, maybe in your job, maybe what you're going through right now. It's God saying, hey, I want you to listen. COVID-19, I think this is a listening moment for all of us. So He is unrelenting in speaking to His children. Lesson number two, really quick. Like Samuel, I think we run to familiar voices to get what we need. You see, Samuel grew up in the temple and the only voice he knew was the voice of the priest, which was Eli. So naturally, you hear someone calling you at night, you're familiar with Eli's voice, he runs to Eli. And I think, like Samuel, we are so accustomed to running to the world to running to friendships, running to even church, thinking that church can replace Jesus. Some of us use church as our safe ground and say, you know what, as long as I'm in church, I'm going to be okay. Let me tell you this, you can be in church, but far away from Jesus. And I speak from experience. I have served in church and my heart was not right with God. I have helped in ministries and my heart was not right with God. So again, like Samuel, I think the issue is that we've been running to familiar voices and God is saying, no, I'm going to cut off these other areas that you think are life-giving because I'm the only one that you need. Listen, maybe you're here and it's your first time. 
and you're watching this and you happen to stumble across this stream in just a few seconds, let me tell you this before you click away, okay? God, Jesus is not here to answer all your questions. He's here to show you that He is the answer. You can ask a hundred questions and you may not get the answer. But let me tell you this, you'll find out tonight that Jesus is the only answer. And with Him, your life will make sense. Okay, so let me move on to the third point before we jump into what I want to talk about. Because the second lesson that we learned that I just said is what I want to focus on because while we've been waiting, I think we've been running to so many voices. Okay, we'll go back to that, but here's the third lesson. God didn't speak to Samuel until he got a proper response. Think about that. Until Samuel said, Lord, speak for your servant is listening that was the only time that God started to open the conversation to tell Samuel what he wanted to say I think a lot of us including myself we go through the silent moments with God because he's waiting for the proper response some of us don't even pay attention to His leading, to His calling, to His purpose. We do our own thing, make our own money, grow our lives. And yet, there He is calling out to you and there you are, there I am, giving God the wrong response. So He's saying, ah, you're not learning it yet, Brian. You're not picking up from it, Brian. So I'm going to keep calling your name but I'm not going to open the conversation until you properly align and respond to me are you with me okay that's a quick segue now we said the title of this talk today is have you been waiting long right we said have you been waiting long let me rephrase that question and Marge is going to show it in the screen I think the question should be this have you been waiting right I think the issue that I have and that you have is that, yes, sure, we've been waiting long, but I think we've been waiting the wrong way. Just a few weeks ago, I talked about patience in the Zoom service that we had. And you know what's beautiful about patience? Patience is not just you waiting for long periods of time. It's how you wait. It's the attitude at which you're waiting. Did you know that a bad attitude can cost you a blessing? I believe that. A sour attitude can cost you a blessing. So again, I'll throw you the question again. Have you been waiting with the right heart, the right posture? Have you been waiting with a healthy spirit? Or have you been angry at God because of the delay? Have you been angry at the people around you because of the delay? That's what I want to talk to you about tonight, about this issue of waiting. Still with me? Yes? Now, before we jump into any verse, let me tell you this. I know very few people that love to wait in line. Like Sir Rico, for instance. He does that for a living. He, he does errands for people and he loves to wait in line. I don't know why, but most people don't love to wait in line. Do you love to wait? Microwave nga lang, you're frustrated two minutes. You can't wait for two minutes. Sometimes you open the microwave before it beeps. Come on, let's be honest. Drive through. Sir, can you wait five minutes? What? This is a drive through. Why are you waiting for five more minutes? That's why I, I drove through, right? And we have no patience for waiting. Now, our version of waiting, follow with me. Whenever we wait, don't we get tired? Yeah? We get discharged. We get angry, we get weak, we get broken. And if you're that person that's waiting for a special someone, you must be tired. Lord, when will she come? When will he come? You know, you might come ahead of her, you might come ahead of him, and that's it for me. And some of you are waiting for the right job. And kapoy, you're just tired of waiting. Let's be honest. Our version of waiting drains us it tires us as human beings amen you're still with me but i want you to see in isaiah the biblical way of waiting it does the opposite look at isaiah 40 marge is going to display that on the screen here's what it says but those 
who wait on the Lord shall what? Renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Wow, wait a minute. Brian, the only waiting I know is the waiting that drains. It's the waiting that keeps me impatient. It's the waiting that makes me give up. But this waiting that Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah was talking about, is a, a waiting that strengthens, a waiting that keeps me from being weary. It's a waiting that makes me walk and not faint. What does this mean? So again, I go back to the question, have you been waiting right? Because the proof that you and I are waiting wrong is that our waiting has drained our strength. Our waiting has weakened us. It has not strengthened us. It's discouraged us. It's not empowered us. How come Isaiah talks about this waiting that strengthens us it's a waiting that makes us level up it makes us mount on wings like eagles it makes us soar i want to know what this kind of waiting is let's do a quick word study the word wait in hebrew is the word kava okay say kava i know kava okay kava okay okay i'm just kidding okay kava don't lose me let me give you a few definitions of wait. Number one is this, and this connects to Pastor JP's message. The first definition of wait, kava, means to collect. Think about that. Now, last week, Pastor JP talked about the widow and the jars of oil, right? And what the prophet told this widow is that I want you to collect as many empty jars as you can. And then once you've collected it, enter your room with your son, shut the door and start pouring the little olive oil that you have. And after every jar was filled, the last jar came and the widow said, son, are there any more empty jars? And the son said, there are no more. And the Bible clearly says, and then the oil stopped flowing. Now, I wonder... In my mind, when I look at the word wait, and it means to collect, this is not passive. This is so not passive. To collect jars is active. You and I have to understand that when Isaiah talks about waiting, it's not just waiting in your couch. Lord, Shanaba, will she come? You know, you're stalking somebody on Facebook. I promise you. That's going to be an issue because that's not the waiting that Isaiah had in mind. This waiting is to collect. And let me tell you this. When you wait the right way, you begin to collect things like character. You begin to collect things like faith. You begin to collect things like, God, there is this hope in me that's alive. And in your collecting in faith, you see God change not your circumstance but your heart now this leads me to the second and most popular definition of weight kava is this to look to look for to expect and to hope i think this is the most obvious meaning of waiting lord i want to wait and be expectant for your answer i want to wait and be hopeful that you're going to come and do this for me lord i need a job so by faith, in hope, Lord, I trust that you're going to open doors so that I can find a job. Lord, I'm looking for that special someone. Lord, wherever that person may be, I'm going to hope against hope. Even if I'm getting older, my hair is turning gray. God, I'm going to hope against hope because that's the kind of God that you are. And I think this is the most common definition of weight that we understand in the English language. But even this kind of hope is not passive. It's active hope. It's familiar, but it's active hope. Do not exchange waiting for laziness. Don't exchange waiting for complacency. God didn't call you to be complacent and receive a word. God called you to wait for Him. And as you're waiting, listen, you're listening. Waiting is listening that's why it becomes active every time i'm waiting i'm listening 
Amen. Are, are you still with me? Of all the definitions of kava, of waiting, this is the definition that I want to dwell in. It's this. To bind together. The original definition of that word was, is to bind together. Now, let me show you a verse that uses the same word, wait. Look at Psalm 27, 14. Fantastic. It says, wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Let me paraphrase for you. Be bound together with the Lord. Be strong and courageous. Be bound together with the Lord. Does it make more sense? Now you understand that waiting is to bind together. In fact, they would use this term when you talk about rope, when they would bind two or three strands of rope together to make it what? Stronger. To make it what? Unbreakable. Bind together. That is to wait. Now, here's what I want to show you today, and it will make the most sense. Let me read to you Isaiah 40, 31, and I will replace the word wait with bind together. Listen in. That'll be in the slide. Here's how it goes. But those who bind together with Him shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not be faint. Does it make more sense to you? Now, while your friends are busy looking for their secret partner in life, you're busy binding together with God. While your other friends and your other office mates are climbing up the ladder of success and they're earning more money, you're busy binding together with God. Because you understand this. When your heart is bound together with God, with money or without money, you have purpose in your life. Rich or poor, the fact that you're aligned with God, your life makes sense and your life can make a difference. Those that bind together with Him shall renew their strength. I want you to be the type of person you get a job, but what you're working on is firstly your relationship with God. You're bound together with Him. And because you're bound together with Him, you become the best employee, employer, employee in your workplace. You get the promotion. Why? Because you're bound together with Him. You're not taking shortcuts. You're not trying to shorten the process. You're saying, God, whatever it takes for me to bind together with you, I'm going to look at the things in my life and I'm going to filter what things come between you and me, God. I'm going to attack those things. And whatever things strengthen our bond, Lord, those are the things that I'm going to pour my life on. And this is what I believe. When you focus on the things that matter, there is the anointing of God to do work excellently, to earn a living excellently, to find a spouse excellently. And you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. You know why? Because you're bound to Him. It's amazing that the talk about intimacy is the last thing in people's minds nowadays. We talk about sound Bible doctrine. We talk about so many good things in the Bible. But you know what? It all boils down to intimacy. I can memorize a hundred verses. But if I don't know who God is, who Jesus is to me, everything will not make sense. Are you with me? Those who are bound together with Him shall renew their strength they will mount up with wings like eagles they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint while waiting here's the question while waiting have I been busy binding together with him or have I been busy trying to fix my situation 
I told you earlier in this stream that Jesus is not here to answer all your questions. He's here to show you that He is the answer to all your questions. He is the it. The buck stops with Him, not you. Every promotion comes from Him. Every breakthrough is, it, no, not is, it comes from His hand. Every breakthrough. If we go all the way to the New Testament, here's what it says in John 15, 5, a very familiar verse. Here's what it says. Jesus speaking, He says, Yes, I am the vine and you are the branches. That'll never change, my friend. That will never change. You're never going to be the vine and He's never going to be your branches. It's always going to be the other way around. He is the vine. He is the source and He will always be. And we are the branches. We draw from Him. He never draws from us. He continues to say this, those that remain in me and I in him will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. For apart from me, Jesus says, if you're not bound together with me, you can do nothing. Are you bound together with him? You know, just earlier today, I was watching one interview of Rick Warren. Uh, some of you know this if you follow his church um, abroad. Many years ago, he lost his son to suicide. What a painful, what a painful journey for a pastor to have such a big ministry and lose his son to suicide. I'm not here to judge, but his son grew up with a, a mental condition. And literally, he was suffering from um, clinical depression at a very young age, so on and so forth. But he was asked this question. He said, uh, the, the one interviewing him asked, how did you as a pastor deal with losing your son to suicide? You know, of all the things that he said, they were beautiful. There was one thing that, that Rick Warren said that grabbed my heart. Because some of you, you're here, you've been waiting, and because of the waiting, you've been so broken. Listen to this. Rick Warren says, In the garden of grace, even broken trees bear fruit. Wow. He says, In the garden of God's grace, even the most broken tree will still bear fruit. That is how gracious God is to you. And that is how gracious God is to me. And our kind of waiting, it leaves us broken, leaves us empty, it leaves us in pain, it leaves us confused. But when you work and say, God, I'm going to put you first and I'm going to bind myself to you. And you'll discover that as you wait on the Lord, as you bind together with Him, you will find new strength. You will soar, mount up on wings as eagles. You're going to run and not be weary. And you're going to walk and not faint. That's amazing, no? What a promise. Now, as we're wrapping up, Allow me to read from a short story, okay? Allow me to read from a short story that's written by this, this author named Henry Nouwen. Henry Nouwen was a writer and a theologian. And in fact, to, to tell you the truth, he, he was like a Catholic priest, but beautiful material on faith. And I just want to share this with you. There's a portion of what he wrote about a personal experience that is so powerful, even for our context today, okay? Hang in there with me. And as I read this, Henry Nouwen actually talks about this family named the Rodley family. And he, this family actually, they work in a circus. They do the trapeze. You know what a trapeze is? Yes? March, can you show them a picture of trapeze? There you go. In a trapeze, you basically have a catcher and you have a flyer. That's what a trapeze is. I think that's the dream job of Sir Willie. He, he wants to work in a circus. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. But, 
but follow with me and allow me to read. It's, it's a little bit long, but I promise you, this will make so much sense as we read this together. Okay, let me start. It says here, Henry Nouwen, who is a writer and theologian, he, he writes an interesting true story about his experience with these trapeze artists, which became his close friends in a German circus. And this is what he says, and I read. He says, I will never forget how enraptured I became when I first saw the rod lays move through the air, flying and catching as elegant dancers. Now follow with me. The next day I returned to the circus to see them again and introduced myself to them as one of their great fans. They invited me to attend their practice sessions, gave me free tickets and asked me to dinner and suggested that I travel with them for a week in the near future. So I did, and, it, and we became very good friends. One day I was sitting with Rodley, the leader of the troop, in his caravan talking about flying. Again, I said in the trapeze, there's one flyer and there's one catcher. Now listen. And he said, you know what? As a flyer, I must have complete trust in my catcher. Listen, the public might think that I am the great star of the trapeze, but the real star is Joe, not Pastor Joe, okay? His brother Joe, okay? The real star is Joe, my catcher. He has to be there for me with split second precision and grab me out of the air as I come to him in the long jump. How does it work? Henry Nouwen asked. The secret, listen to this. Rodley said, the secret is that the flyer does nothing and the catcher does everything. Listen, when I fly to Joe, I have simply to stretch out my arms and hands and wait for him to catch me and pull me to safety over the apron behind the catch bar. And you know what Henry Nouwen says? What? You do nothing? And Rodley says this, nothing the worst thing the flyer can do is to try to catch the catcher i'm not supposed to catch joe it's joe's task to catch me if i grab joe's wrists i might break them or he might break mine and that would be the end for both of us and this is how he ends rodley says a flyer must fly and a catcher must catch and the flyer must trust with outstretched arms that his catcher will be there for him are you in the waiting this 2021 let me tell you this you have the greatest catcher of all time and his name is jesus all you need to do is take the long jump of the weight and say god I don't know until when this waiting season is going to end, but I'm going to let loose with open arms into the air. And I trust that at split second precision, you're going to catch me out of thin air and take me to the destination that you so desire me to be in. The flyer must fly and the catcher must catch. Can we agree today? Can we not try to be catchers? I think that's where our stress comes in. We try to be the catcher of our lives. We try to save ourselves. We try to wait and fix our problem. When God says, no, I want you to wait. But as you wait, you trust me. As you wait, the waiting is listening. The waiting is what? Working on binding together with Him. That as you bound together with Him, you shall renew your strength. Marge, can you display for me Isaiah 40, 31? Those that bind together with Him shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. My prayer for you Pastor JP's prayer for you, especially this 2021, is that as young adults, as young professionals, we work on 
firstly our relationship with him lord no matter what i am going to be the person that's bound together with you come hell or high water i'm going to be bound together with you even when doors close around me i'm going to bind together with you you're the catcher i'm the flyer and i'm ready to take the long jump but lord as i do i'm going to trust you through this have you been waiting long also, have you been waiting right? You need to ask that question tonight. Let me pray for you, especially those that have been in the waiting, those that don't know what's going on and how long they're about to wait. The catcher has got you in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, I thank you for the simple word today in Isaiah 40, that those that wait upon the Lord shall find discover new strength they shall mount up on wings like eagles they shall run and not grow weary they shall walk and not faint lord a lot of us have been fainting and a lot of us have grown weary a lot of us at different seasons have waited the wrong way so lord teach me today to wait properly and lord in the wait, i'm going to listen in the wait, I'm going to work on my relationship with you. I'm not going to try, to try to find the one for me. I'm going to work on my relationship with you because I'm the flyer and you're the catcher. And Lord, as I do, I commit 2021 to you. The next six months, Lord God, I want to grow. I want to break through in my faith. I want to break through in my trust to you. So, Lord, even now, I'm not going to ask you for a new job. I'm not even going to ask you for a spouse, husband, or wife. I'm not going to ask you for more money. What I'm going to ask you is the courage to develop my relationship with you like never before. And that as I do, I will begin to understand that when I have Jesus, when I have Jesus, I have everything I need in life for the Lord is my shepherd I shall never be in want Lord thank you Holy Spirit speak to those that are in the waiting season now whatever it is that they're waiting for let them know today that the only thing worth waiting for is you Jesus Christ Lord, we bless you today. Help us to be patient through the wait, trusting through the wait, embracing the journey through the wait, growing more like you as we progress in this journey. God, I dedicate to you myself. I dedicate to you everyone that's viewing today. Thank you for every heart, every hungry heart looking to you today. Bless this time. Punctuate this word with your Holy Spirit. That when we leave this place, we leave this place changed and renewed by the truth of your word. Thank you, Father God, tonight. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Let me greet a few people tonight. Did that help you? Yes? I hope it did. Jesus is the answer. Amen, Janina. Want to say hello to Dee, um, Pastor JP. Thank you for watching. Jessa, Corinne, and so many others. Um, for Weena, who's still with us. Are you in the waiting? Ella, Kara, so many people here. Bok, God bless you. Thank you so much. From the bottom of my heart, Pastor JP and I want to say this. We love you. We want to see you mount up on wings like eagles. We want to see you expand your territory. As the prayer of Jabez goes, Lord, bless me and bless me indeed. Enlarge my territory. So with that, I want to leave you tonight. Think about this word. Read Isaiah 40, 31. Homework, memorize it. That's so easy. God bless you. And definitely, we'll see you next week in our Zoom service.